screen real estate in, in VR terminology, which means that uh, the data that you want to visualize, that's what should pop out, not the frames, not the white space in between and all of that. Um, so we're going to refer back to, to, the, to the term screen real estate every now and then, and that is what that means in this, uh, in this manner. Um, it could be so that we overdid it a little bit. We don't know. Maybe it's too tight, too small. I don't know. It's really hard to find the perfect match. So we tried pretty hard, to be honest. And if it's too much, let us know, and we can maybe dial that back a little bit. So let's see where it goes. And the first thing we're going to introduce is the new theme that you can use, uh, the branding theme. Uh, it's called Novacura Royal Blue. It's based on the uh, new market, um, the new branding that Novacura introduced, I think, last year-ish. You can see the blue color here. Um, when you do a new install, it's going to be Novacura Royal Blue. For those of you using the existing Novacura One and upgrade, then you would have to pick this, uh, this theme. And the intention behind the colors is that it's going to be softer on the eyes, there's going to be better contrast. So it's not only the colors we've changed, there's also opacity in places, change the mapping to the colors in order for the users to see the content better rather than seeing frames and borders and stuff like that. The important thing here is you, you should see what you need to see, not distracting things around it. Yeah, and well, the slide is uh, laid out like this. So 2023, yeah. uh, we have a new version here and then the old version on, on the right-hand side. Some, sometimes maybe it's like below or something, but we try to compare the versions a little bit for you guys to see it, uh, obviously. Uh, all right, so a couple of changes here. Um, as I mentioned, we see the this is uh, the former version. This is the version that's to be released, 2023.3. And the obvious things we changed. Um, there used to be a footer down here. Just take the occupying space. Do you want to keep it? Do you want to get rid of it? <laughs> we got rid of it. <laughs> and then, as Marlene said, we have different colors. We hope that they pop a little bit more uh, also. These. The colors here are a little bit like, I don't know, milkish or something. It's, it's better with the new color. You need to change the theme, obviously, to, to get these colors if you have an installation already. Um, and, but it's not only the, the background colors for the filter or the page where you're at. It's also the grids in the, port, uh, in the table portal here that's dialed back a little bit, so the data sticks out a little bit more. And we have shadows. <laughs> I don't know if that is very visible right here, but it's a little bit of shadow between the portlet here, but it's not here. And that makes it just the experience a little bit better. So we are starting to work more with shadows so we can get a more Apple-esque look to it. And this is actually something that was released in the, uh, in the latest version. So 2023.3, and it's the top navigator. We changed it so the navigation is now done in the top banner. So you have the logotype and then you have navigation. And as you can see here, it opens up as a tree when you hover on what it is you want to look at. Before, it used to be in its own banner below the logotype, hence taking up a lot of space. So the feedback we got from you is, why is that just a lot of white space up here and the navigator down there? Move it up. So we did. And the uh, navigation also opened all of it in one go. That doesn't happen any longer. So if you have a very long navigator, it used to go all the way down to the bottom of the screen. Now it opens just the part that you're after. And some of you might already have this version. As I said, this was released, um, when was it? 2023.1. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and again, this ties back a little bit to screen real estate because that means that you can get more data yes. into the same screen size here, since the menu is not occupying like a couple mm. of centimeters there. Okay, so to dig into some of the portal, that was uh, more um, general UI changes in the portal. If we dig into the portal in detail, um, the screen real estate theme comes back here as well. We want to visualize more data in a, in a better way. So as an example here, we have again, again we have uh, the old version to the to right and the, the new version to the left. And we're going to go through some of the changes in here. And the first thing we changed is that we put all of those action buttons that are available in the uh, portlet header into its own little container. It's actually called a kebab. 
uh, kebab skewer. skewer. Uh, yeah. three dots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the technical term in Swedish is meatballs. <laughs> no, meat, meatballs was lying down. I Google no. it. It's lying down meatballs with like that. It's, uh, it's a kebab, kebab and then you have the hamburger. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we put all of those into uh, its own container. So it's taking up less space. Because it used to be that if you had the portlet really, really small, it took over from the, uh, the header. So you couldn't see the header because you needed space for the uh, action icons. That doesn't happen any longer. All of them will go into this container, with the exceptions of the actions we think are used quite often. In this case, refresh of the data, refresh is outside the container. So that's available straight away to click upon. And for those of you who are sitting close, you can see that it says clear user settings. That icon has been changed on the popular demand. Uh, clear user settings and refresh data looked very, very similar or looks very similar in the, uh, in the uh, existing portal. And we changed this. A clear user setting is, is now a broomstick. So you should be able to separate those two. Yeah, so those so used to be, this was one of them and this was the other. Yeah. One is refresh, one is clear. Uh, no, no one more. knew what to press. So. <laughs> Uh, and what else? Yeah, we get the uh, the names of the, the icons here, right? So when, mm. when we have a drop down instead, you can see what they're actually doing, which could be good for, for user. Yeah. Um, the, again, screen really state here. Maybe I'll use the mouse here to show a little bit. Um, you see that? You see my pointer here? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, so the action menu here is all the way up from here down to there. Uh, in the old version, it took, it occupied more space, as you can see. So tighten things up again. And this is, I guess, where we need your input. I mean, did we do it too much? It's hard to tell here, obviously, but when you're sitting and working with it well, after you upgraded, um, let us know if this is too, being too small or maybe we need to should do it some more, perhaps. Um, yep. uh, next thing we changed is the uh, sort icon. Uh, so you can sort in the old version, then there is narrow up and down. And if you sort on multiple columns, there will be a one and a two. Those two icons took up, a lot, uh, took up a lot of space in the column, which meant you couldn't make the column as small as you wanted. So what we've done now is that we changed the icon so it's now like a little py pyramid underneath the, uh, the text. And if you sort on multiple columns, you will have the number. Uh, it's right aligned if the column <coughs> width is uh, wide enough. If you make it smaller, the number will pop down underneath the, uh, the text. So again, we're trying to make the text are uh, uh, visible at the same time as you should be able to configure the, uh, the width of the portlets um, or the column. And as that is quite a little bit of a hidden feature. I know yeah. sorting on two columns. Uh, if you press, do you know, Fredrik, how you do it? Uh, <laughs> press control? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the second one you can sort of many, or three or more, actually, mm. four or more, actually. You passed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep, the, uh, I don't know if you guys know what this is, but if you have a table portlet and a connected something that's called a quick action, it means that you execute a workflow per row in your table portlet. The difference is, uh, again, a little bit tighter. As you see, it's not as wide. Uh, it's thinner than the old version. And the actual play icon got a refresh. Uh, shout out to our developer, Philip, here, I think. He is pretty good in UX and front-end designing. So he like, you know, I'm going to make this a little bit looking, looking a little bit better. And he did, so that's good. I like it better, at least. And we also changed um, some things in the, uh, the pagination. As you can see, it's very wide here, just taking up a lot of unnecessary space. So we made it not as wide and removed a lot of the frames around the, um, the numbers. Again, tidying up the interface Still, the functionality is still exactly the same. You can get to the pages, you can move around the same way. It's just not as cluttered and taking up less space. Yeah, I like this paginator, paginator a lot. Well, I don't know, what do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. Right, so, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't even remember. But anyway, the, uh, the end result of all these changes, the portlet size here, it's exactly the same portlet. It's just the new version, the old version. And the, uh, the row height is also set to the same and the font size. But you can see over there you get, is it eight and a half yeah. lines? And over here, one, two, three, four, seven lines that you can see. So we're taking up the same space in the portal, but the end user can see more data. 
And as Ola said before, we also changed the opacity on the grid lines here. So the data, it's slightly blacker also in the color. It should pop more as opposed to there where it's very sort of same, same and harder to see the data for the end user. And it's not only the vertical space that's been, oh, uh, it is uh, not only the vertical space, but <laughs> it is uh, uh, not least the uh, group by, or if you, if you use the group by um, functionality in the table portlet. It used to um, take up quite big space in the old portal. We tightened that as well, changed the text slightly, and you, you actually drag the column you're, so you're grouping by. Uh, we put it under the user buttons instead of above, made more sense to us. Uh, and if the table portlet is groupable, uh, the difference in how many rows you can see is even bigger, obviously. Yeah, and this is just to show the change when you set the column width to be... Um, yeah, how you can set the column width now, I should say. That you see the full name of the column at the same time as you can actually fit more columns into the same space. So, trying to be more efficient with the usage of the space. Yeah, so here you see all the columns are more, have been, um, they, they can't display the entire name of the columns. Um, but here we can. Um, no. And we can still show six columns here in the new version instead of five. Um, Mm. In addition to seeing five rows instead of four rows. So, a lot more data in there overall. That's what we want to get through here. Um, and this is the Kanban. Uh, again, from a functionality perspective, no change, but we tighten the, uh, the uh, column, what's it called? Status columns? Uh, yeah. yeah. That area. And uh, as you can see, we also removed a lot of the grey colours that used to be in the old portion. So, uh, Hopefully, a tidier look easier for the users to see the data they're actually after. And it looks better, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks a lot better. And I can add also that the, this is uh, the Kanban can be run in compact mode and normal mode. This is the normal one. If you run compact, you can fit even more cards in now than you could before. So. And here we see another example. It looks a little bit cleaner, right? With the kebab skewer and the refresh, and that's it, not having all these icons sticking there everywhere. Okay, so record portlet, well, there are some changes in the record portlet as well. Um, these seem to maybe be obvious to have been included from the get-go. But we now support list of values in uh, record portlets as well. We didn't used to do that. And uh, we can also specify which fields in the record portlet should be editable. So in the old version you need to, I mean, you could obviously in your workflow, your crab flow, decide which rows were supposed to be saved but you didn't indicate that to the user at all. But now we can set them to read-only and not read-only. And there is also a hidden, uh, I don't know if you guys stumbled into it, maybe you, you run into it, I don't know, that you want to pass something to the workflow, but you don't want to show it in the record. Yeah. Um, right now it's bringing, it's bringing everything you have in your selection statement into the workflow, but if, even if you decide to not show it. So you can yeah. use keys and stuff like that without showing it and having that in your optic workflow. That is a good feature. That is a good feature. <laughs> it was almost actually a part, but... <laughs> and uh, this is a change to the Gantt chart on a request from one of our customers. Um, in Sweden especially, we work a lot with week numbers rather than dates. And the Gantt used to be set only uh, or show only dates, but the request was now that they want to show the, uh, the week numbers in a certain uh, views. So there is a configuration setting to say uh, use ISO week formats. Please note ISO formats. So if you are in America, it's not the American weeks, it's the ISO format, which is the one we use here in Sweden. And since ISO will always start on Monday, that means that if you have this setting active, the start date will always be set to one, which is start date on Monday. And if you go to the next one, this is what it will look like. You will have the year and the week number. Um, yeah, it's probably difficult to see, but it used to be that, um, or if you haven't ticked that box, it says the uh, the date of the first day uh, in the week. Yeah, if you start on Sunday, it will be the Sunday date. If you start on Monday, it will be the Monday date of that week. Now instead, it says the the year and the week number. And also, in, in if you are in this Zoom level, as it's called, we. We are uh, viewing weeks, and then you see the days under the week in the top one. 
But you can also zoom out uh, and get the months, and then you mm. will see the weeks in the second bar, uh, week number. So a very Swedish way of working, but we like it, right? <laughs> 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 I don't know, Mahesh, I think you've seen Swedish weeks, right? You you know that. In Denmark, so. Yeah. In Denmark as well. Okay, yeah. Okay, we have uh, a filter indicator. Uh, this is actually not new, new from this version. Uh, got introduced um, in the version, the prior version, two or three versions ago. But <coughs> under your, if you scroll all the way up to the right in your portal, there is this clear all filter setting, which means that you clear out all fil filters, basically. I mean, you might have clicked on things and make other portals filter on it, and you're not really sure where you are. You can just clear all the filters. In this version, we're also introducing filter on portlet level. So if you have a portlet listening to some other portlet, so you click on a filter portlet, for example, then the listening portlets, as in the tables, they will have this little filter icon in the header. So it's easy for the user to see that something is affecting this, uh, this portlet. And if you remember, we said that certain action icons will be outside the little kebab thingy. This one is another one that we think should be outside because it needs to be visible to the user straight away and also you can click on it to clear the filters in, in that specific portlet. Visible or yeah. not? Yeah, the, 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 this one. <laughs> deep, deep breath. Um, we, in I think it was the first version we released in 2022, we changed so the headers of the portlets can have three different uh, settings. It's visible, visible on hover, and hidden. It used to be either visible or auto hide, I think it was called, uh, called before. And the visible on hover one, um, to access the, uh, the portlet header, then you had to take the, uh, the cursor and you sort of hovered in the vicinity of where the, uh, <laughs> the portlet header should be, and it folded down. And the feedback we got was that it opened way too often. When it opened, it covered the custom buttons that were there, so it's, yeah, it was annoying to the user. And especially if you have multiple of these in a row in a container, it was a very sort of CCK movement that you got when you moved the cursor around on the screen. So what we've done is that we have now a teeny weeny little handler up in the right hand corner. So if you want to open the, um, uh, the portlet header, then you hover on that one and it folds down. So same functionality is just a smaller area in which you can reach it. Yeah, and this is much easier to show, I think. So yeah. I mean, if we're much <laughs> both versions and the difference. But what's basically mm -hmm. ha happening here is that the user, you, you needed to sort of attack the portlet from, from the top, then the, this header would fall down, and yeah. that's why it gave you access to the things you needed, like export and stuff like that. Mm. In the new version, you need to go here, and then the menu pops down. It's more deterministic, it's more controllable. Yeah, and that little handle is only visible if you're hovering on that portlet. Otherwise, you can't see it at all. Yeah, if you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the same thing for containers. Um, we realized that um, when we have the handle and you put tables in a container, you have the problem of which handler am I grabbing, the container or the table portlet or the portlet's handle? handle. Um, so when you are dealing with containers, the, that little handle uh, shows up in the left-hand corner instead. Um, there is also a, a pretty big improvement, I think, when you have uh, many table portlets or portlets overall stacked in a container. The container is in stack mode. I don't know if you used that. Frederick has, I'm sure. Yeah. So it used to look like this. It was pretty, you know, the, they sort of floated together. It wasn't very obvious, especially if you had a couple of them, uh, that they were different portlets. So we uh, looked at Chrome and Edge and the sparses and checked how they did it and made a more tab-like experience of the portlets inside a stacked container like this. So it's more obvious that you are on this one right now and it's probably pretty intuitive that you have other portlets to, to look at it. Did I forget anything about it? Sorry. Um, only the spec that I had, I asked the developers to do like the index cards when you went to the library when you were little and then you just went <laughs> swoosh on them. <laughs> I, I showed my age. Yeah. And then I said, like how to browse this, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. I, don't <laughs> I don't even know what you said. <laughs> you didn't go to the library, that's why. Yeah. 
And this one, Frederick. This one is for you. You see why you get to sit Yeah. You can add custom buttons to basically all portlets. And it used to be once a custom button was added, it ended up in the order they were added. You could not change the order. So if you want to change it, you just have to delete and then do again. It's now possible to drag and drop and decide the order whenever you want to. And the same drag and drop functionality has also been added to the, uh, the workflow portlets. So you can move the, wor um, the workflows around in any order you want. Small step for mankind, but yeah. it's <laughs> 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 uh, Okay, we have a new web client. You guys are aware, I hope, some of you at least. Um, so we have the old web client and the new web client. Uh, the new portal used to have the old web client up until this version. Uh, it is an opt-in setting though, because uh, we, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it could be, have huge impact, right, to, to our company. You could have corner cases that we haven't thought of, so it's an opt-in. You need to go into the web client uh, of the portal, um, or in a file actually called settings.json in, in the assets portal. Our support can help you with this if you want to opt into it. So, but from the next version, you have the possibility to opt in to use the new web client. Otherwise, you will still be running the old client, uh, web client. And there are some benefits, even the web client has a lot of real estate thinking behind it. So we, we expand it, we use more of the screen, it hopefully looks a little bit better. And we benefit, in the portal, we benefit of the improvements that the web, web client team does, which is Molly's team as well, so that's not too bad. Um, uh, and yeah, here's just two, two screens. I'll show you in a bit, I think, uh, that it's pretty speedy. It's a more of a localized installation uh, on, on, in the browser, so it's snappier. It has a way snappier feel to it, so that's good. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I promise more than that I'll, I'll You can demo it. So. Uh, I can yeah. demo it, yeah. So there is a new uh, cascading list of values. Uh, list of values are translation tables you can say when you have a var uh, value or a key, say you have a part number and you also want to get part description. You go in, in under the list of values and you, you do a select statement to get the key and the value, right? And then you can use it in tables and records and stuff like that. We didn't used to have cascading list of values. That means if you have part, category, well, part categories first uh, and then parts. So if you choose a category, you only want to see the parts in the next row that, that is attached to that category. That is what we call cascading list of values. It's not only for parts, but it's a good example, maybe. So in this version, it's introduced. And if you check this little box down here, um, where it says cascading dependent on portlet data, that means that this list of value is actually dependent on another list of value, parts and parts categories. So what that does is if I choose desk stationary as my part category here, I get my desk stationary items, parts. And if I instead would choose writing and drawing, I would get the parts that contain to that category. And these ones on stacks, so you can make three or four or five of them in a row if you have more. Like which part category is, contain, um, is connected to my company, whose company is part, which category of that part, and then color if that comes next to it. I can demo this as well uh, in just a second. That works in table portlets, filter portlets, and in record portlets. Yeah, it always worked in filter, but we introduced it now in, uh, in record and yeah. table. Yeah. yeah, the release date, 27th of September. So mark that down in your calendar. Christmas comes early. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I would also like to uh, show this slide, uh, just as Andreas and Paul did before, ideas.novacura.com. Uh, please go in, um, look at, the, the, this is our feature request system. Mm -hmm. So if you have any features that you want, then please add them here, look at what has already been added. You can talk to each other, you can talk to me, you can talk to Ola, and this is where we would pull what we do next from. You can vote on, uh, on the uh, requests in here. So in the release that is now going to be released on the 27th of September, I think it's six or seven of the, uh, the features that comes from your ideas here. And to quote Marvin, ice cream improves every chance of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do like ice cream. <laughs> yeah, all right, that was it.